Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a new study that suggests we may have discovered what's known as an exomoon, a moon around an exoplanet somewhere out there far far away. And today I'll tell you about how we've discovered it and what it all means. Welcome to What The Math. So a quick question, can you guess what we're looking at right here? This is not really that exomoon that we've discovered, this is a lot closer to home. This right here is the moon of Jupiter known as Io, the most volcanic object in our solar system. As you can see, there is a lot of volcanic activity on the surface and it's actually quite easily visible even if you have a powerful enough telescope to look at it. And what's even more unusual is that if you were to take a telescope and use different frequencies of observation and possibly even see things in um, different infrared light and look at different spectra, you would be able to see an unusual cloud in this region, very close to Jupiter itself. And by the way, Jupiter is right there in the vicinity of Io. So Io is the closest of the moons of Jupiter, but obviously it's not the only one. Nevertheless though, if you were to zoom into Jupiter, which is right there in the middle, you would start seeing this unusual cloud of sodium. And the closer you zoom in, the bigger the cloud gets, but also you start realizing that the biggest side or the biggest part of the cloud is in a very specific location. It's literally where Io is. So this unusual cloud of sodium, potassium, and a lot of other ions is basically produced by volcanoes on Io. And all of this volcanic stuff that comes out of Io stays around Jupiter and creates a relatively easy to observe cloud or volcanic volatiles or volcanic um, ashes that are constantly emitted and they are always there and they make a very specific and very unique signature that's visible from really far away. And back in 2006, several scientists proposed the idea that if we were to see something similar, essentially a cloud of various materials, specifically sodium, and it's an ionized cloud, it would probably mean that we've just discovered another moon very similar to Io. Well, guess what? We've known that this object right here that's orbiting around its parent star, really close to it by the way, this object is known as WASP-49b, we've actually detected a similar cloud around it um, just a few years ago, and um, it wasn't really certain what this cloud meant just yet until a very recent study. The study right here that you can also find in the description below talks and essentially analyzes all of this data and um, more or less confirms the idea that what this cloud suggests is obviously that we've discovered a volcanic exomoon, a moon around another planet. But these scientists didn't just look at that one planet in this one star system, they've taken a look at several, making sure that other similar clouds that were detected were also either potential exomoons as well, or were just clouds created by something different, like for example by rings, which can also create these types of clouds. So um, they've analyzed things like, for example, can even this planet have a moon? Can the moon stay stable in that position for a long enough time? Is the position of the cloud relatively close to the planet or is it far away? In other words, they've taken a look at several different parameters, trying to see which of these planets could definitely have a moon and which of these clouds represented that moon. And by thoroughly analyzing each of the planet's spectra and by looking at what types of clouds they were producing and what um, types of planets they were and of course if the moons were even possible there, they've confirmed that this particular planet known as WASP-49b could definitely have an exomoon in that particular location where we've detected the cloud and the only other maybe better explanation would be if it was a very very large ring around the planet. But because this planet is so close to its parent star, which is not that far away, it would be very difficult for this planet to maintain the ring. But it could potentially have some sort of a moon around it. But the difficult part here would be to, I guess, explain why is this moon volcanic to begin with, because only a volcanic moon would produce these types of emissions. Let's actually just place a copy of Io right here in orbit, just to see what all of this would look like. And, well, looks like we've already gotten our answer. Because these objects are so close to the star, they don't even have to have um, similar effects to Io itself. As you can see from this simulation, the moon starts steaming pretty much right away because it's so close to the star. And because of the steam, it's creating the cloud by itself. And so, even though around Io, the reason this moon is so volcanically active is uh, because of the tidal effects, 
and these tidal effects are actually caused not by Jupiter but by the other moons that are nearby, for example moons like Europa, uh, Callisto and Ganymede. Europa as a matter of fact, which is the closest moon to um, Io, exerts the highest amount of tidal force on Io and this is why it has so many volcanoes. And um, other moons would maybe explain why WASP-49b's moon also has these uh, volcanoes, but I think it's more likely that this um, planet and of course its moon are just too close to the star, so this is why it even has the volcanoes. It's so hot that um, the entire moon is evaporating, as is the planet itself very likely. And we do have the simulation of what this planet may look like in Space Engine, and this is actually a relatively accurate representation of what this hot Jupiter probably looks like. It's an extremely hot and very highly energized object that's also losing a lot of its own atmosphere because it's slowly spiraling toward the um, parent star. Now the uh, cloud itself cannot be simply explained by the loss of this atmosphere because this would not really explain the uh, materials we're de detecting. We've seen a lot of things like sodium and potassium and a lot of ions that are typical of volcanoes and chances for this uh, planet itself to have some sort of a moon are really really high. Now we obviously haven't seen it directly, we haven't really looked at the shadow of the moon passing in front of the star, neither have we seen any gravitational disturbances caused by the moon because it's just simply too small but the cloud itself and its position and of course its composition are evidence enough to suggest that once again this is probably an exomoon. Now officially this would be the second um, attempt to discover an exomoon and I think this one is a little bit better in terms of the evidence provided. You can check out the previous exomoon we thought we discovered in the video somewhere above my head right now, but the idea there was that we noticed that some of the rings that we've detected had um, gaps in them and we thought that maybe these gaps mean that that particular planet had moons as well. But in this case, however, the science to us shows exactly what we see around objects like Io. The parallels between what we've observed around this system and what we've observed around Jupiter as well are just too unlikely to be a simple coincidence. And I think just the fact that we've discovered similar elements in a similar position in a relatively similar pattern around another gas giant is really enough to confirm that it's not a simple cloud out of nowhere, it's maybe rings but those rings would probably be destroyed pretty fast, it's very likely that it's probably an exomoon and one that's very active volcanically and is emitting a lot of materials creating a very interesting cloud around WASP-49b and allowing us to finally discover something we've been looking for for quite a long time. Now obviously it'll be a while before we can confirm if this is real or not and it's actually really difficult to see these objects. Because moons are not very massive gravitationally, they don't really exert enough force on the planet to make it wobble, neither do they provide any other signs. Even if they pass in front of the star, they're just too small in size for us to be able to see them. However, if other stars and other exoplanets have just as many moons as we typically have in our own solar system, with Jupiter basically having almost 80 now, it means that they are going to be really really common. They're going to be pretty much everywhere, but very difficult to see. And also very difficult to try to understand what's on them, or most importantly if any of them potentially have habitable conditions. Now even in our own solar system we have at least one moon that's super exciting. There are actually a lot of moons that are very exciting, but I think Titan is the one moon that we would definitely love to explore one day. The conditions here are very very unique, but they are so similar in a sense to what we have on planet Earth that um, discovering more similar moons out there in the uh, galaxy would be definitely a sign for us that maybe somewhere out there is actually a moon that we can one day inhabit. For now though, all we can do is keep exploring, keep looking around and keep trying to find new ways to travel across space so that one day we can maybe settle on one of these objects. For now, that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Check out the paper in the description below and also come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Space out and as always, bye bye.